Our fourth installment of chapter seven is shorter on the number of slides, okay, but really heavy in terms of the importance of these ideas because it directly builds on what we saw in video three, Lewis structures, and now some additional information to look at when we are putting that structure together. Okay, because you'll run into a situation where there's multiple possible Lewis structures that you could put together, okay? Different ways for the bonds to form, different ways for the molecule or the atoms in the molecule to be arranged. Okay? And formal charge also helps us with things that are electron deficient and hypervalent. Okay? So in any one of those situations, okay? multiple structures, electron deficient, hypervalent, the idea of formal charge can use can be used to help you choose the best possible Lewis structure. And what formal charge is, is a thought exercise more than anything. Okay? It's figuring out right, the hypothetical charge that all the atoms in a molecule would have were the electrons in the bonds evenly distributed, shared equally. Basically, we're just cutting the bonds in half, splitting the electrons. They're not actual charges, they're just helping us track electron ownership, which is kind of the same thing we did with oxidation numbers back in chapter four. So as we proceed through this, keep in mind, you'll always wanna try and achieve a formal charge of zero, if possible. Won't always be, but if it is, you wanna try and get everything to have a formal charge of zero. And how do we calculate it? We can do it for every atom, in the Lewis structure of our molecule. And the calculation is right here in the middle of the slide. Fc, the formal charge, is equal to the number of VE, VE stands for valence electrons. Okay, so the number of valence electrons, which we already would have had to know when we were putting our Lewis structure together, minus the number of lone pair electrons that belong to that atom in our Lewis structure, minus one half the number of bonding electrons. So how many electrons are going to a bond in that molecule divided by two, right? One half of that. Another way to do that, because we've said before, every bond is made up of two electrons, right? You can just replace one half number of bonding electrons with just the number of bonds. Okay. So that's how we calculate the formal charge for each atom. Okay. Then other things to keep in mind. The sum of the formal charges has to equal the charge that's on the entire species. So if we're dealing with a molecule, those things are neutral. So the sum of the formal charges must be zero for that thing to be neutral. But if we have a polyatomic ion, something that's charged overall, be it positive or negatively charged, the sum of the formal charges has to equal the charge on your polyatomic ion. Okay. So that helps us check our Lewis structure and it will help explain some of those exceptions to the octet rule, things that are electron deficient and hypervalent. Yep. And keep in mind, the ideal formal charge is zero. So let's look at this one for practice, finding the formal charges. Now notice each one of the chlorines is identical. So we only need to show calculating the formal charge for each one of them once. Chlorine has seven valence electrons being in group 17. It has six electrons that are belonging to lone pairs, and it has two electrons in this single bond, right? One half of two is one. So if I'm calculating the formal charge of chlorine, it's seven valence electrons minus six lone pair electrons minus one bond, the formal charge of each of the chlorines is zero. So I know that those are happy. And you'll see that halogens like that. Anything in group 17 likes to have a single bond and three lone pairs. Nitrogen in group 15, it has five balance electrons minus two lone pair electrons minus three bonds, five minus two minus three. Nitrogen also has a formal charge of zero. So because everything in this molecule has a formal charge of zero and there's no charge on the molecule overall, Right? Zero plus zero plus zero plus zero. I know I have the best possible Lewis structure. Okay. Can't get any better than that. You can be 100% certain in your answer. Okay. 
So that ties into a situation where you're running into multiple possible Lewis structures. Okay. The quality of a Lewis structure can be determined by how our formal charges are distributed. Okay. So the most likely or the best Lewis structure will have all formal charges of zero or as close to zero as possible, right? Because if you have a polyatomic ion, it's not possible for everything to be zero. If you have two things that are two atoms next to one another, ideally their formal charges are both zero, but if they aren't, they have to be opposite side. You'll never have two positive formal charges or two negative formal charges next to one another. And last, if you have to have something with a negative formal charge, you should put it on whatever is the most electronegative in the entire structure. So on the bottom there, we have two possible Lewis structures for carbon dioxide. The one on the left is the proper Lewis structure. Okay? Both of them satisfy the octet rule. Both of them use the appropriate number of electrons, okay, which is 16 in this case when I'm building the Lewis structure. But how do I know the Lewis structure on the left is the proper one? If you go through and calculate the formal charge of everything in the Lewis structure on the left, both the oxygens and the carbon have formal charges of zero. It's the best possible structure. Down here on the right, if I calculate these formal charges, carbon's still zero, but this oxygen is plus one. This oxygen is minus one in terms of a formal charge. Okay, practice calculating those if you're not comfortable with it. Rule one tells me I want the formal charges to be zero if possible. That's only achieved with the Lewis structure that's there on the left with two double bonds, not the one that's on the right with the single bond and the triple bond. So let's see how this helps us with those exceptions to the octet rule. Okay? We saw in video three, some of those exceptions to the octet rule, electron deficient, hypervalent. And formal charge helps us be confident when we're doing that because it's actually more advantageous in terms of having a lower energy, more stable, for a molecule to have all the formal charges equal to zero. It would rather have all the formal charges be zero than it would to have everything obey the octet rule. Okay. So to put that differently, formal charge is greater than the octet rule. It outweighs it. Okay. And we'll see some examples of those later on. The last important idea from this fourth video, well actually tying in with 7.5, which we'll tuck in the end there, is resonance. Right? Resonance is a really big idea from chapter seven. And that's a situation that arises when we have some ambiguity with where to put double or triple bonds. Okay? We have a single Lewis structure that doesn't properly predict the properties of a molecule or an ion. Yeah. So when we have that situation, one Lewis structure isn't cutting it, we have to draw two or sometimes more, three, four, up to six Lewis structures yeah, that describe the distribution of the electrons. Yeah. Those are called resonance forms, and they're indicated by a double-headed arrow. Okay. So like this, okay. arrow with two heads. That's how we separate out different resonance forms. And a key idea is that individual resonance forms don't exist. They're just the best way that we can describe it on paper. Okay. And you see in the definition down here, if we have two or more Lewis structures with the same arrangement of atoms, which is a key idea, I can't just move atoms around and bond them in different places. Okay. Those are called isomers. That's not what we're thinking about. We're thinking about keeping the atoms in the same place, but showing the distribution of electrons, how they're bonded in different ways. Okay. What truly exists, what we would find in nature, is an average of all of the resonance structures. So let's see what that looks like with SO2 okay. here on slide 65. SO2 has two resonance forms. Because if you go through and draw this Lewis structure, you'll be dealing with 18 valence electrons. You'll build the skeletal structure and then run out of electrons before you're able to fill the octet for sulfur. 
meaning you have to pull down one of the lone pair electrons off of oxygen to make a double bond. But this is the ambiguity I was talking about. Where do I put the double bond? Do I put it on the left side or do I put it on the right side? And when you run into that situation, that's where you need resonance forms. You have to draw both of those structures that are shown on this slide to adequately describe what's going on. And because in truth, neither of those actually exists. They both kind of exist simultaneously. The actual structure isn't either of these, which are known as resonance forms. It's an average of the two, which is known as a resonance hybrid. So we don't alternate between having a double bond and a single bond, right? It's actually kind of like a bond and a half, a right? bond of 1.5 that exists simultaneously in both areas. And a slide that I've pulled from a different textbook to describe that right, is the idea of a rhino being a hybrid between a unicorn and a dragon. A unicorn and dragon would be resonance contributors. Right? They don't actually exist. Average the two simultaneously, right, in a rhinoceros is what you can actually see. We draw resonance contributors because it's the best way we can represent them on paper, but what actually exists is an average between the two. We can see three resonance forms with the nitrate ion. Yeah, because where do I put the bond? Oxygen one, oxygen two, oxygen three. Well, it's in all three places simultaneously. It's not ever a single bond. It's not ever a double bond. Here, it's like a bond in a third. I put a practice slide in here to get this idea down. You should try drawing the Lewis structure for nitrite, NO2 minus. I paused the video. Give that one a shot. Don't forget to add in the extra electron because this is a polyatomic ion with negative charge. Okay, so you should be working with 18 electrons total. Okay, and then after that, okay, try the Lewis structure and then Google the Lewis resonance structures for nitrite or NO2 minus, and you should have come up with two resonance contributors. Keeping in mind all the bond properties, the NO bonds are identical to one another. Yep. So key ideas before we leave resonance. Okay. Hopefully you picked up a lot of this from those examples. Okay. The resonance hybrid, the thing that actually exists in nature, has a structure that isn't described by either resonance form because it's not possible for us to draw a bond and a half or a bond and a third, which is why we draw multiple resonance structures. Okay. In our resonance hybrid, the thing that actually exists isn't flipping between the two, right? If you go and see a rhino at the zoo, it's not like it's spontaneously a dragon or a unicorn. It's always just one thing. Electrons aren't shifting around between the structures. As we saw, right, if I struggle, I have two identical, two or more identical places where I could put a double bond, for example, Right, equally plausible, that redundancy that I talked about, that's where we're dealing with resonance. And I've already mentioned this, you can't ever move atoms around in your resonance structure. Okay? You can't move atoms, only electrons, only change lone pairs and double or triple bonds. Another practice here for drawing the Lewis structure for formate, okay, and this one carbon goes in the middle, pause the video, give that one a shot, and you should also have come up with two resonance contributors. And you can search for formate resonance contributors, Lewis structure as well. We finished this video with a quick discussion of 7.5, okay? And that's a longer section in the textbook, but I've really cut section 7.5 down here for just key ideas. I had two slides for key takeaways I want you to have from 7.5, okay? I'd like you to know this formula qualitatively. I won't ask you to do any calculations, but I want you to know the information it gives us, okay? This equation describes lattice energy, which corresponds to the strength of ionic bonds. Yep. Energy, lattice energy defined down here, energy required to separate one mole of a solid ionic compound into gaseous ions. 
right? But it's just kind of a measure of how strong that lattice solid structure is. Two factors that go into it, right? The charge on the cation and the anion, the greater the magnitude of charge, if we have something that's plus two and minus two, for example, compared to plus one and minus one, that has a higher lattice energy. And then K is a constant, but down here, R is the distance between the ions. So you can think about this like atomic radius, but that's in the denominator. So the larger these things get, the weaker the lattice energy, the smaller the lattice energy. And so if we want something to have the strongest ionic compound, we want it to be highly charged and small. The other takeaways to have from 7.5 now for molecules with covalent compounds. You should know that triple bonds are stronger than double bonds, which are stronger than single bonds, which is pretty obvious, but also know that they're shorter. Triple bonds are shorter than double bonds. Double bonds are shorter than single bonds. So as you increase the bond going from single to double to triple, it gets stronger, but it also gets shorter. Just like with ionic radius, with a couple of exceptions, right? as you increase size, the strength of a bond decreases. Okay? So as things get bigger, bonds get weaker. And then to compare the two, if we're thinking about a lattice energy to a bond dissociation energy, ionic versus covalent, ionic bonds and ionic compounds are typically much stronger than our covalent. That wraps up the information from video four. In video five, we will lose, use Lewis structures to describe molecular structure and polarity. Know from this video, formal charge and resonance and how those help us with situations like comparing multiple Lewis structures, things that are electron deficient, things that are hypervalent, and the key ideas that we discussed just here at the end.